At the beginning of the film, we meet a grown man named Joe, who works as an advertising executive. Joe seems indifferent to everything around him, and he is a habitual drinker, constantly comes to the office late, and seeks relationships with women. Coming late again, he runs into his nagging colleague. Later, Joe's boss enters his office and tasks him with hosting essential dinner guests and closing a deal with them. Afterwards, Joe receives a call from wife Donna, who confronts him for forgetting her daughter's birthday. Joe explains that he can't attend because he has to enter entertain special guests, arguing that the three-year-old won't even notice his absence. We then see Joe sitting with the client, and his colleague joins in to help him because of her. The client agrees to the deal, but leaves for an urgent call. Meanwhile, Joe tries to flirt with her, revealing his plans for the evening. She takes offense and expresses her desire to distance herself from him. Unbeknownst to Joe, the customer overhears the conversation and reacts by physically assaulting Joe with a punch to the face. Joe consumes excessive amounts of alcohol, and yells at the others from the side of the road. Battling deep disappointment and exhibiting drunken behavior, he heads to a friend's bar for more drinks. However, his friend, already intoxicated, suggests that Joe return the next day. The scene switches to Joe waking up the next morning. In the bathroom, he discovers that the shower is running, assuming someone else is using it. However, the room is unoccupied. Slowly, Joe realizes that he is in an unfamiliar room, attempts to leave, but finds himself trapped behind iron doors. The room contains only a changing lamp landscape and periodic food service. Despite attempts to inquire about its location, he receives no response. The usual meals, including a loathed bottle of liquor, arrive along with a holy Bible and an empty notebook with a pen. Joe watches television, favoring channels that feature women. A mysterious fog fills the room, causing Joe to collapse onto his bed. An unidentified person enters and collects samples of his hair, fingerprints, saliva, and other tissue. The next day, Joe learns from a news channel that his wife has been murdered, leaving behind their three-year-old daughter. Over time, Joe's mental state deteriorates, exacerbated by the isolation. Four years pass and he develops severe mental disorders. Joe discovers a rat in the bathroom and befriends it, but one day finds that his new companions have been prepared as food. Devastated, Joe smashes a mirror and attempts to harm himself with the glass, desperate to end his life. Despite his intentions, he wakes up with no facial hair, his wrist bandaged, and the room without mirrors leaving him baffled. He discovers a camera situated in the corner of the room, which reveals that a man of African descent is monitoring him. Five years after Donna's tragic death, a television show delves deeper into the mystery surrounding her murder. Joe tunes into a live interview with his neighbors and sees his daughter, who is skillfully playing the violin. Overcome with joy and emotion, Joe is moved by her performance. Inspired, he begins to document his thoughts, expressing how he sees his daughter after such a long period and marveling at her beauty. Determined to be a positive presence in his daughter's life, Joe embarks on a journey to stop drinking and adopt a healthier lifestyle. Although he struggles with intense alcohol cravings, he manages to resist the temptation for the sake of his daughter. As he kicks his drinking habit, his mental faculties begin to sharpen, leading him to ponder the identity of those responsible for his wife's kidnapping and murder. In a poignant moment, Joe retrieves a pen refill and meticulously scrapes concrete off the tiles while he showers. As the years pass, he is in the process of composing a final letter to his daughter, urging her to read these letters before judging him. Packing up the letters, Joe prepares to leave, just as the interviewer reveals to his daughter Mia, who harbors deep resentment, believing her father to be responsible for her mother's death. Meanwhile, a thick fog envelopes the room once again. When he opens his eyes, he realizes he is in an isolated location, confined within a box. All he has are his cards, money, and a cell phone. Noticing an umbrella adorned with the same symbols he carries in his hands, he encounters a person who, upon entering a space, is confronted by a group of individuals. Individuals. Taking a stand, he defends the stranger, engages in a fight, and triumphs over his aggressors. At a later point, he sees the same umbrella, only to find a person with mental health issues. Dr. Marie, a compassionate figure, intervenes and calms the distressed individual. As he leaves, she hands him her contact card, offering to help him if he needs it. He heads straight to his friend's bar, and is shocked to discover that his friend is alive. Joe recounts his experiences, and as he does so, his phone rings. The caller wishes him independence and advises him to couch his actions in words for his daughter's happiness and well-being. Joe compiles a list of suspected culprits for his situation, and with the help of his friend, searches their database throughout the night. His friend discovers him unconscious in the morning, prompting a call to Dr. Marie for help. Intrigued by Joe's story, Marie spends the night immersed in his heartfelt letters, in which he details his love for his daughter. Upon awakening, Joe confronts Marie about reading his letters, but she insists she wants to help. A text message leads them to a location 
location where they find Joe's boss in a compromised mental state. Joe seeks Marie's help in tracking down a restaurant called Dragon. While Marie leaves for her shift, Joe delves into a quest to discover the sender of the recurring meals he consumed for two decades. Following a lead, he discovers a man responsible and confronts him in the same building where he was once held captive. Amidst the confrontation, Joe learns of a scheme involving kidnappings and mysterious phone dealings. Engaging with several adversaries, Joe sustains serious injuries. Meanwhile, Marie, who is investigating Joe Duell, receives a call about his treatment. Her friend tends to Joe's wounds, urging him to consider Marie's past pain. He questions Marie about her feelings for him, but she claims their love was in the past. Joe asks her to leave and not return, and is later seen at his friend's bar. A call from a man behind him interrupts his solitude. Attempting to fight back, Joe realizes the opponents are skilled. The man reveals he has Joe's daughter and presents a videotape of his wife's murder, confessing to being the perpetrator. Offering millions in diamonds, confessions, and a promise to end his own life, the man asks two questions. Who is he and why was he kidnapped for two decades? The ultimatum is clear. He must give satisfactory answers within 46 hours or his daughter will be killed. As tensions mount, Adrian, the boss, watches Marie's room through a surveillance camera. Joe and Marie embark on a joint search for additional clues. They stumble upon Evergreen Academy as the next lead. As they travel to Deep Place, together they dig into Joe's past. Arriving at the Academy entrance, Marie strikes up a conversation about Joe with the Academy's headmaster. As Joe searches for clues in a book, he discovers the identity of a man named Adrian, who attended the same Academy as Joe. The Academy, now closed and sold for years, prompts them to return home. Joe asks his friend about Adrian, a former classmate. Meanwhile, Marie takes a bath. As she approaches Joe to change his band-aid, he unexpectedly takes her hand, revealing mutual feelings of love. Adrian witnesses the unfolding events in shock. Chucky discovers that Adrian established the Academy in the name of his sister, labeled as Spineless. Adrian monitors Joe's phone, leading to a confrontation where Adrian kills Chucky for the disparaging comment about his sister. Joe and Marie together reveal the truth about Adrian's sister, who was humiliated by Joe at the same Academy and later faced a tragic fate involving her father. The next morning, they find Chucky's tongue in a package outside the Academy. Joe heads to see his daughter and confronts Adrian, eventually defeating his bodyguard. Adrian demands two answers from Joe, who reveals his identity and lays out the events of that night. Adrian hands him the money and escorts Nia, supposedly Joe's daughter, into the green room. The episode airs from there, revealing that it is a staged show and that Nia is not Joe's real daughter. Adrian allows Joe to leave the building on the condition that Marie meets him. Marie, as Adrian's sister, falls in love with Joe, only to discover that she is his biological daughter. Overcome with heartbreak, Joe witnesses Adrian make good on his promise to take his own life. Joe decides to leave Marie and disappear from her life forever. Marie resumes her usual activities as the film concludes. Thank you for watching. Thank you.